What is your definition of temptation? My definition of temptation is like if a fisherman threw a lure out to catch a fish, we're kind of like the fish and the bait is like temptation. And it's like we get closer and closer. We end up getting caught on that hook. And once you're caught on that hook, he's kind of like that fisherman is going to reel it back in slowly and slowly. And at some point, you might just give in. What are some temptations that you're struggling with right now? Right now, I'd probably say uh, just getting out of listening to worldly music. That's that's a big one for me. I've been chopped on that for a long time now. And I've been trying to get out of the habit of listening to that music. But it's just so hard because it's like like the bait. It feels so enticing in the moment. Like it feels so good to listen to it. But after, like once you're done listening to it, it's kind of just like, dang, like, it don't feel good after, you know. It's 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 pleasuring in the moment, but after it just don't feel good. I think another one that I also struggle with is I just be on social media, just like scrolling like on free time. As soon as I get free time, usually I'll just like be on my phone just scrolling and stuff and for whoever knows how long. I'll just be scrolling for a long time. I think those are like the two main temptations that I have right now in my life. All right, Mason, thank you for being honest with me and being vulnerable. Um, I appreciate it, man. Of course. So when these temptations arise, do you know how to fight them? No matter how strong or mature of a Christian you are, you will eventually be tempted. Temptation is the fleshly desire to do what is wrong. It is also a trial in which a man or woman faces where they're left with the opportunity to either be faithful to God or unfaithful to God. Whenever you get those urges to want to do something that deep down inside you know is wrong, that is a clear sign that you are being tempted. And temptation, if not dealt with properly, causes us to sin. And sin eventually leads to death. I'll start by saying that feeling tempted is not a sin. James 1.15 says this, Then, after desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin. And sin, when it is full grown, gives birth to death. So this verse is saying that when you're actually in the act of doing it, now it is a sin. God will not cause you and lead you to sin. It is the tempter who will try to lead you and lure you in to do what is wrong. In the book of Matthew, Matthew actually refers to Satan as the tempter. And one of Satan's primary weapons against you is temptation. Dating all the way back to his first encounter with humans in the Garden of Eden. The first story that we're going to talk about today is the story about Joseph and Potiphar's wife. So in Genesis 39, it talks about Joseph was sold off into slavery by his jealous brothers. And when he was in Egypt as a slave, Potiphar, a captain under Pharaoh, bought Joseph as a slave. And you see, God's favor was always with Joseph. Joseph was a man that was seeking after God. And Joseph was a man that favored God, right? And God favors those who favor him. So even though Joseph was sold off into slavery, God was with him. And when he was working as a servant under Potiphar, Potiphar's household became blessed. The house would flourish. The fields would flourish. Potiphar could tell that this guy Joseph was anointed by God. Potiphar actually 
liked Joseph so much, treated him like his own son, and he entrusted everything to Joseph. But the trial and the story that arises is Potiphar's wife. See, in the scriptures it talks about Joseph was a tall, well-built, handsome man. And Potiphar's wife could not keep her eyes off of him. Matter of fact, Potiphar's wife tried many times to pursue Joseph, and Joseph would turn her down. Bye, Felicia. But one day, when nobody was in the house besides Potiphar's wife and Joseph, this is when Potiphar's wife caught Joseph by surprise, grabbed him by his garments, and said, Lay with me. We care for you here. We... I feel you are special. What? So now Joseph is left in the situation where he has the opportunity to either remain faithful to God and remain a faithful servant to Potiphar, or to give in to the pursuit of Potiphar's wife. And if you read on, it says that Joseph left his garments behind in her hand and he ran out of the house. No, why have you come here tonight? To be with you. No. This is not right. Joseph, look at me. No, I, I, will, I will not betray my master. I'm talking to you. No, stop. Wait! No. I order you to stay. No. Everything you are, you owe to me! Bye, Felicia. You see, I like this story because we learn something from Joseph. In the face of temptation, sometimes the best thing to do is just to get out of there, to flee, to run away. So I ran to the end of the road. And when I got there, I thought maybe I'd run to the end of town. Remove yourself from that situation. You see, oftentimes we stay in that situation. Oftentimes we don't remove ourselves. We stay there. We let the thoughts fantasize. We entice the thoughts. And eventually it causes us to sin. But in this story, what I really wanted to pull from this is that when you're in temptation, the best thing to do sometimes is just run. Just get out of there. Maybe you're somewhere where you shouldn't be. And you know that if you stay in that place, it may cause you to do something that you're going to regret. Or it may cause you to sin. Honestly, the best thing that you can do in that situation is just leave. Leave before the temptation becomes too strong to bear. Sometimes when I think about that story, I become really hard on myself because Man, if I'm being honest, if I'm not in my right mind, and if I'm not actively seeking after God, if I'm not in my word, if I'm not in my worship, if I was caught lacking spiritually, I feel like there's a good chance that I would have fell for that temptation. But Joseph showed great restraint. Joseph knew his mission. He knew his purpose. He knew that God had greater things and greater rewards that were laid ahead of him. And a lot of the times, we just have to trust that God has greater things for us. Whatever sin or temptation that we're dealing with, that we're struggling with, in that moment, you may think that that's what you want right now, but that's a lie. That's not really what you want. The reward that God has for you when you resist temptation is so much greater than what the world is going to give you. So remember, if you feel like you're being tempted, just get out of there. Another story in the Bible that I want to talk about, where Jesus Christ himself is being tempted by the devil. So Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to fast for 40 days and 40 nights. Jesus did this so he can hear from God, so that the angels can minister to him. And oftentimes that's why we fast, so that we can hear a word from God, you know, or he can reveal something to us. Fasting is another form of walking in the Spirit. So towards the end of Jesus' fast, he was very hungry, walking in the desert with pretty much nothing to eat, very little water. Jesus was hungry. And the tempter, Satan, came to him and tried to get him to break his fast. And he said, If you are the Son of God, command that these stones become bread. But Jesus answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him up into the holy city, set him on the pinnacle of the temple, 
and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge over you, and in their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. Jesus said to him, It is written again, You shall not tempt the Lord your God. Again the devil took him up on an exceedingly high mountain, and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said to him, All these things I will give you, if you fall down and worship me. Then Jesus said to him, Away with you, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only you shall serve. Then the devil left him, and behold, angels came and ministered to him. You see, the tempter is very clever. He knows your triggers. He understands how to get you to fail. You see, Jesus was hungry. Imagine fasting for 40 days and 40 nights with no food. Jesus was obviously hungry. And Satan came and tried to tempt him to turn stone into bread. Because we all know that Jesus can do that. Right? He's done it before with the 5,000, with just five loaves and two fish. And he was able to feed a multitude of people. But in the midst of temptation, what does Jesus do? He fights back Satan with scripture. A lot of the times, one of the most important tools and weapons that you have is scripture. In the face of temptation, you need to remember scripture. There's a reason why they call the Bible a sword. Why they call the word of God a sword. Because it is our weapon against the enemy. When the enemy comes to tempt us, when the enemy comes to lie to us, we use the word of God to fight back against the enemy. Hebrews 4.12 says, For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. Jesus shows us that scripture is very powerful and that you can use it to fight against temptation. And if you don't know any scripture off the top of your head, Maybe this would be a good time when you go home. Find some scripture that is really meaningful to you and try to remember that scripture by heart because you never know when you may need to use it. Another strategy when overcoming temptation is to simply call a friend or someone that you trust. Ecclesiastes 4.12 says, Though one may be overpowered by another, two can withstand him, and a threefold cord is not quickly broken. In this scripture, it's saying that two and three is stronger than one. You see, the enemy doesn't play by the rules. And that's why sometimes those temptations are so hard to fight, especially on your own. So another good strategy is to just call a friend. Whenever you're feeling tempted or that you're about to do something that you shouldn't be doing, take a step back, call someone that you trust, and say, hey, I'm being tempted right now. Can you pray for me? I guarantee you that friend is not going to turn you down. If you look at Jesus' life, he had 12 disciples. He makes it really clear that we are not to do this on our own. It's too difficult. 
having discipleship and people that you can trust is encouraged. When we come together in greater numbers, it gives us more power to fight back against the enemy. Matter of fact, this is one method that I'm doing right now currently. I have someone that I can call whenever I'm feeling tempted to do something that I shouldn't be doing. And I call this guy up and I say, hey man, can you pray for me? I'm feeling tempted right now. And whenever he's feeling tempted, he calls me. And I pray for him. It's nice to have God in your corner. And it's also nice to have a friend in your corner as well. Another great way to fight against temptation is simply to pray. Galatians 5.16 I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Though this verse isn't specifically saying to pray, praying is a form of walking in the Spirit. And this verse is saying when you walk in the Spirit, you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. A great way to fight back against temptation is simply to cry out to God and to pray. And if you don't know what to pray in that moment, just say these three simple words, God help me. Sometimes you feel too overwhelmed by your fleshly desire and you feel like, well, I'm just going to do this. There's no way out. But take a deep breath and in that moment, just say a prayer. Even if you say it under your breath, just say, God, help me. I'm being tempted right now. Take me away from this. Remove this desire. God always provides you a way of escape. 1 Corinthians 10.13 says that no temptation has overtaken you that is not common to man. God is faithful and he will not let you be tempted beyond your ability. But with the temptation, he will also provide the way of escape that you may be able to endure it. You see, there is no temptation that is too strong for you. God will not let you be tempted more than your ability. And he always provides a way of escape. All right, guys, so if there's five points that I want you to take away from this video, these are the five. Number one, flee, run away. In the face of temptation, sometimes the best thing for you to do is just run to get out of there. Remove yourself from that situation. There's no need for you to stay there. It's only going to do you more harm. Number two, remember scripture. Just like Jesus used scripture in the desert to fight back against the devil, you too have the power to use scripture against your enemy and against any temptation that you face. Remember, the Bible is like a two-edged sword. It is sharp and it can cut through anything. Number three, call a friend. Have someone in your corner, a battle buddy, someone to hold you accountable. Remember that two and three is stronger than one. You can't do this alone. Number four, cry out to God through prayer. And if you don't know what to say in that moment, simply just say, God, help me. Prayer is a form of walking in the spirit. And when you walk in the spirit, you won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. And number five, remember that no temptation is too strong for you to overcome. No matter what it is, God gives you the strength to overcome any temptation that comes your way. And there are so many great rewards when you resist temptation. You improve in self-discipline and self-control. You achieve all of your long-term goals because a lot of the times these temptations hold you back. Your mental health and well-being improves and enhances. A lot of the times temptation causes short-term pleasures, which is followed by guilt and regret. When you resist temptation, you avoid having these negative emotions. You gain in personal growth and development because when you resist temptation, it helps you to know how to navigate in a difficult situation. It builds resilience and perseverance. Also, your relationships will be enhanced. Your relationships with your family, your friends, boyfriend, girlfriend. Oftentimes, temptation causes dishonesty. Resisting temptation helps you maintain trust and intimacy in the relationship and it builds a reputation of reliability and honesty and it will strengthen your connection with others and the most important gift of all comes from God himself James 1:12 says this blessed is the man who endures temptation for when he has been approved he will receive the crown of life which the Lord has promised to those who love him Yeah, it was so many times I really was lost.
Asking the Lord which way do I walk? I felt convicted, I used to live deep in that sin. My life was just really the cost. And I ain't even saying I'm perfect, but all of the bad in my life had to just knock it off. And the way that I'm living is cause I got G.O.D. with me, so start asking me what's the sauce. Yeah, I won't say I don't be tempted, but I fight it with prayer, I'm never gonna lose. I can do stuff that I've been did. If I think about the past, then I'm never gonna move.